It is happening. Robots are coming whether you like it or not, because currently there are 10 million unfilled jobs in the United States. 7 million of those job openings are for essential roles in warehouses and transportation. And key warehouse suppliers predict they will run out of people to hire in 2024. Guys, Elon Musk has been saying it for years we are in a population crisis. I mean, I'm guilty too. I should probably stop making this video and go out and meet a girl, but after this video. But because we are not having kids, we are on pace to have 85 million unfilled jobs globally in 2030. So in this video, I'm gonna show you five humanoid robot companies who see the need for labor and they're going to fill it. Raise AI looks to be Tesla's fiercest competitor in the space when 11 days ago, they unveiled their prototype AGI bot. It weighs 55 kilograms, which is 20 kilograms less than Tesla's Optimus bot. They advertise that the cost to make it will be 27,000 US dollars, which is great. The first impression I get when I look at the design though, is that it looks cheap. It looks like they use cheap material. And if this was a robot in Star Wars, it kind of looks like it would be a dumb robot. In robotics, a degree of freedom refers to flexibility. And in the hand of the AGI bot, there are 12 degrees of freedom. This compares to 27 in Tesla's Optimus bot. So Tesla's Optimus is about twice as dexterous. Now the flexibility of the whole body, AGI bot has 49 degrees of freedom, which compares to 200 in Tesla's Optimus. Optimus is four times as flexible as this AGI bot. So this guy talking here, his name is Pang, and he is the CEO of Ray's AI. He's actually quite the engineering hotshot in China. They call him the 100X engineer who left Wuwa's prestigious youth genius program to found this company. It took less than six months from the inception of the company to what you are seeing here, an on-stage demonstration. That's pretty impressive, and I can tell Pang and his team are talented because they design all of their own actuators for AGI bot. As Elon has taught us, this is a must in humanoid robotics because it optimizes cost and performance, and there's just not that many actuators on the shelf. This is absolutely a company to watch and a real player in the space. All right, next we have, holy, that is terrifying. Um, next up we have Eve and Neo and I will never touch that robot with a 10 foot pole. That thing looks like it will be watching me as I sleep. Funny enough, OpenAI, the creators of ChatGPT are actually investors in this project. So there's some big money behind it. The robots seem to be wearing jumpers and it makes you wonder if there's actually robotics under the jumper or if these are just humans in the photos, but it could also be a strategy for saving money on cost in manufacturing, not having to create the armor. In the careers tab, you can see the robots standing behind the employees. So it does appear that they are manufacturing these. You can order them if you email them, funny enough, but that face is terrifying. So let's move on. All right. <laughs> this looks like this would be an ad on AliExpress. I mean, it's got no hands and we're talking about labor shortage. So this isn't the most relevant product, but I wanted to show you it because of the balance. This level of balance is exactly what we need to see in this space. This robot might not have hands, so it might not be applicable to this video, but I wanted to show it to showcase Unitree's work on balance. This was something I was super concerned about, but it looks to be going great. Unitree also offers this dog robot, which can do some pretty amazing tricks. And it's got this weird spinning face that looks like a demigorgon. But the most useful thing about this product is definitely security. If you have a big estate, this would be a pretty cool security dog. I would never be seen running with a dog like that in the city. That is embarrassing. But anyways, this video is about filling the need for human labor, not about dog robot pets. So let's move on. Next up is figure AI. This concept looks really good, but they are in their early stages, although they did just get a $70 million Series A round of funding. Their short-term goal is to have 50 robots working in warehouses by 2024, and their CEO, Brett Adcock, is a really likable guy. He says he believes that humanoid robots will colonize planets, and I agree. I mean, they have hands, they can see, and they don't need to breathe oxygen, which is kind of important in space. It does seem like Figure is striving to replicate Tesla's culture, they have a master plan listed on their website, something that Tesla is now in their third iteration of. They release master plans and five years later after completing them, they release a new one. It also shows that uh, figure wants to move fast and be technically fearless, another trait of Tesla. And they're product first, mission focused. This is absolutely Tesla. Tesla does no advertising. They put all of their energy into their products and they preach their mission, which is to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy. So. I really like the CEO and what he stands for, and I'm absolutely rooting for him because it seems like he sees Tesla's excellence and he wants to help perpetuate that. Finally, there's Optimus. Six months after telling investors about the concept, 
they unveiled the development of Optimus on stage. What you see here of Optimus walking out is the first time Optimus walked ever without a tether. I don't know why Tesla is always risking it in these demos. I mean, first you have the Cybertruck smashed glass and then now you could have a robot fall over on stage. They just live life by the edge. They move fast. I mean, they probably finished getting it to do what it needed to do the night before, but it didn't fall and it waved to the crowd. Seven months later and Tesla showed us their latest generation robot and all of its dexterity and intelligence that it had acquired since. They showed us its motor torque control and its ability to carry out delicate tasks with a level of gentleness that is required for things like cooking and craftsmanship. They showed us how a Tesla maps out its environment using visions, picking out points of significance, to create a mental map of its environment and navigate safely. They showed us how they are training the robots using video and we even got to see it complete some increasingly complex tasks. What is that sound? Oh, <laughs> that's just a Tesla bot actuator lifting a piano. Tesla created 28 unique actuators that optimize performance while conserving the most amount of energy possible. To settle on actuator designs was very difficult for Tesla. A car, for example, has two powertrains, but the task is very simple. It's to accelerate. In a humanoid robot, however, the task is always different. Sometimes it needs to pick something up. Sometimes it needs to push something. Sometimes it needs to drill something. To maintain the torque and the balance of the robot, Every actuator has to have a different level of speed and torque for each different task. Every task asks something different of each actuator. Tesla used the torque speed trajectory of every possible actuator design for every imagined task and picked the actuator design that got the best performance for the least amount of cost. To reduce cost even further, Tesla looked for actuator designs that worked in multiple joints in the robot. This kind of engineering is how Tesla can get the cost of this robot to less than $20,000 as they said they would do at AI Day. Tesla is the best machine manufacturer on the planet. They have innovated the auto manufacturing process so hard that the government just issued a massive loan to help manufacturers retool their factories so they can copy Tesla and become profitable again. This robot will cost less than 20,000 because it uses way less material than a car and Tesla has already paid for the brain. Tesla simply took their AI that they have made in their cars. The cars can look at the world and they can drive through it and navigate through it because they have so much video data that they've been training neural networks with. They just take that little computer and put it in the robot and it can do the exact same thing. The robot can walk through a room and pinpoint where things are and remember its location. It can identify objects through the mass video labeling that Tesla has been doing for years with their cars. A Tesla car can identify the difference on the visual demonstration on the screen between a cat and a dog. The robots are also going to leverage large language models like ChatGPT and Tesla's huge X slash Twitter database because Elon Musk owns it to be extremely communicative as well. Tesla also said their battery pack is perfect for a full day's work. That's like three times as long as those other companies we looked at. I got a question in the comments of my last video asking how Tesla plans to implement their Tesla bot data flywheel. This is basically asking how I think Tesla will train their robots to get smarter and smarter. Well, Tesla has told us that their robots learn through video data, but you can't have an owner buy a Tesla robot and take it home while he goes and kicks his dog because then the robot will see that and learn a bad behavior. But remember, history is cyclical, and when jobs are taken away, new jobs are created. And I think Tesla is going to hire a lot of people to do what this guy is doing in the video right here. People are going to show up to work, put a camera on their head, and do all sorts of tasks while Tesla records the POV of the robot and then trains the neural network with that footage. The other option is that Tesla contracts this work out. Now, what I mean by that is they create an app store and developers undertake the task that you're seeing here. Developers film the footage, they put a camera on their head and they do all sorts of things. And then they release an app. That app might be, make your robot know how to cook curry. And this developer will take a bunch of footage of him making curry and all the ingredients that you need. He'll develop the app. Tesla will approve the app on the app store. That's very important so you don't get taboo apps. And then anybody can download it and then their robot that they already own will now know how to make curry. But the developer has to train it with video and the app has to get approved by Tesla. Now you might think, oh wow, Tesla's gonna have so much power. Tesla is a publicly traded stock. 
you can buy shares of this company and you can vote on how they manage the company. It is a very good thing this is not a private company and that it can't take these robots and go to war because their shareholders would say, no, we don't want that. Elon Musk only owns 20% of the company. So it's ultimately the shareholders who get the ultimate say. And we need to make sure that these robots are being used for good. If you simply cannot wait to live in this humanoid robot reality, I recommend this novel, Machines Like Me by Ian McEwan. It's funny, provoking, it's clever. And the protagonist buys one of the first robots sold to the known world. And, you know, this movie is about an innovation that's coming to us. So I think it's extremely, you know, relatable. You know what? I'll give you a little taste. In loftiest terms, we aimed to escape our mortality, confront or even replace the Godhead with a perfect self. More practically, we intended to devise an improved, more modern version of ourselves and exult in the joy of invention the thrill of mastery. In the autumn of the 20th century, it came about at last, the first step towards the fulfillment of an ancient dream, the beginning of the long lesson we would teach ourselves that however complicated we were, however faulty and difficult to describe in even our simplest actions and modes of being, we could be imitated and bettered. And I was there as a young man, an early and eager adopter in that chilly dawn.